Hi guys, welcome down to the Monday Night Golf Shows, here with myself, Rick Shields, and Peter Finch. And we've got quite a jam-packed episode lined up for you. We're, we're globe-trotting all around the yeah, world, well, giving you news from everywhere. Well, considering it's the end of the season, there's a lot of golf-related news which is flying about with reckless abandon at the moment in time, covering everything from actual tournament play to quite a lot of stuff off the course as well, which is, which, which is which is great for us, you know, being in the news anchor business. It gets us lots to go on. <laughs> so let's start off. Uh, we're actually going to sp spin it on its head a little bit and actually give the ladies, uh, Amiga Dubai Ladies Masters, the most presence on the Monday Night Golf Show here today because... It's an interesting introduction. The ladies. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> this was at, played at the Emirates course, which we're, we've just played at recently, and the grandstands were actually up as we were playing the golf course mm. as well, which was quite an interesting little thing. Yeah, so That's very two golf courses in two months that we've played with the grandstands up, not giving too much away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the 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 course that was in phenomenal shape, and there was one lady who absolutely tore the field apart. Yeah, Shan And Shen. we're not talking about Paige Renee, Pete. No, we are, we are not, <laughs> although we will talk about her in a moment. So Shan Chen Feng absolutely destroyed everyone 12 by 12 shots. shots. Now, to be 21 under she was when she finished, 21 under around that course is really, really I mean, it's amazing. Really good. I mean, if you guys have played there before, there are birdies opportunities, but over four rounds, there's not 21 under of birdie no opportunities way. really no way. around that course. So it's a fantastic score. And to decimate the field by that much, she was just on fire. Yeah, absolutely. So we're actually going to dedicate our swing analysis episode to uh, Feng as well. <laughs> Shan Shan. <laughs> Shan Shan. Really. Shan Shan Feng. Um, or Feng Shang Shan. Which way around? Uh, I Shan think Shan everyone's got a Shan Shan. Yeah. So we're going to do our swing analysis for Shan Shan as well, which is going to be quite an interesting one because we've not done that many ladies swing analysis, so stay tuned. Well said. And <laughs> also, we'll talk about uh, probably the, the most talked about golfer this week. Yes. Miss Paige and Renee. Yeah, so Paige, if you... Are Paige, watching? <laughs> Paige, Paige, if you're watching, uh, congratulations on your first pro event. Uh, she, If you don't know who Paige Renee is, she's an Instagram star, uh, as far as the golf world goes, so over half a million followers. Uh, posts some very fantastic pictures. I think most people would agree. I don't really know how to how to dance around uh, dance around that subject. But she posts things on Instagram. I need to get off this yeah. particular train. And the organisers of the event in Dubai thought, you know what? What a great way to advertise our event by getting her along. Now, both me and Rick are big fans of her swing. I want to point that out to begin with she has a very very good swing and playing in the first event she did miss the cut but with all the pressure that was on her um and it's not not a bad show well she was that. she was the most talked about lady golfer going into this event so well done Paige. i think you did really well and all the hype and everything else mm. and I, I love the honesty that she has she was bloody nervous oh, she yeah, was scared well, yeah, and i yeah. like that because you don't get a lot of that from a lot of golfers these days a lot of them are far too cool for school and just kind of sticking it you know Oh yeah, I'm serious face on. Uh, also, shout out to Carly Booth, finished in 40th, a friend of the show. Um, had some up and down rounds, but uh, not the best final round, but had it go in for a spell there. So Carly, get, have a nice uh, Christmas off, and hopefully next year you're going to all fires, all cylinders flying, ready for the new season. Um, and then there was an on, odd tournament over in the States. Yeah, the Frank Templeton shootout, which... <laughs> I think the organisers thought, you know what, because there's not enough Texas Scramble slash Greensums slash doubles event, why don't we just create one where we just do everything all at once? And so this it's hybrid proper, it's tournament... It's a winter league tournament. It, it's a really, it? really odd one. So it was Texas Scramble, Greensums, and then the final round was... Better ball. Better ball. So there was 12 pairs that competed it out over three rounds of golf, oddly as well. Three rounds. They couldn't think of a fourth no. format. <laughs> They'd literally <laughs> run out of ideas. Turkey trot. <laughs> Three club turkey trot on the last Imagine round. Imagine the four club gone. That'd be great. And we had a winner who we've not seen for an awful long time in the winner circle, and whether his partner dragged him through it. But it's great to see Jason Duff in the back in the W winner and a nice paycheck of three hundred eighty-five thousand. Yeah, it was 385000 each, wasn't it, for each. him and Brant? Him and Brant Snedeker. Uh, so well done. I think okay. that was a... It was good a few good a few years ago. I mean that that pairing of Duffner and Sedica. I mean that was a formidable kind of opponent. So if they're getting back to winning ways, that could only be good. I think Duffner's one of 
he's a fan favourite, isn't he? He's, he's a very individual kind of guy, and people like to see him, I won't say be miserable, but be his own self yes, on the course. Yes, absolutely. Just so so laid back, you he know, is, he's almost he's falling asleep. He's definitely his own so. person. Uh, interestingly, Zach Johnson and Patrick Reed. They were bottom of the table. Well, not together. But Jack Johnson played with Patrick Rogers, and JB Holmes with Patrick Reed, and they came dead last. So not a good week for Patricks mm. out there, unfortunately, guys. Uh, let that be a lesson. If you are a Patrick <laughs> and you are suffering with problems, please call the helpline listed below, Patricks Anonymous, and you will get through to a trained and caring advisor to help you through your difficult situation. It's 0800 P A T R I C K. <laughs> Moving over also to a, another slightly bizarre event, and the Thailand, Go Thailand Golf Championship. Uh, the, I'm guessing there's quite a lot of invitations going along. This radio is very warm now, by it's the way. Quite and we've got a radio nice. below us. <laughs> the hair has gone off my hands, which is probably not a bad this thing. Is, this is very nice. Um, and we had another familiar face, mm. but not been in the winner's circle for a long time, Jamie Donaldson. Yeah, so Ryder Cup hero, uh, Jamie Donaldson, who... I've done nothing since he's, that. Since that, he is... He changed manufacturers, he changed sponsors. He's, he's, he's literally done nothing. He's changed quite a lot, and he's not actually kind of managed to get back in the winner's circle since the Ryder Cup, but he does seem to be putting a little bit of form together over the last few weeks mm. leading up to this. So, yeah, nothing amazing, but, you know, making cuts and all the rest of it. We saw him out in Dubai as well, hitting some shots. He's, you know, he seems to be swinging it well. He just needs to get that confidence back up. You could tell that his, as much as he shot a 65 final round to take victory, a uh, three-shot victory in the end, mm. there was times in there where he looked a bit edgy, and there was a put on 17, the par three island green, which is an amazing par three. Gotta get the boat get over to. A boat <laughs> over to. He hold a birdie put, but I honestly believe if it didn't go in the hole, it would have gone in the water. It was travelling at some speed. So you had Westwood chasing up very closely behind. Um, also saw that from France and Sergio Garcia. Um, Jamie Donaldson, Lee Westwood, uh, Clement saw that and oh wow. Oh, you put yourself in there. Oh, what was that? Okay. Um, this guy also got exemption to... The Open for and the Masters for 2016. So you've got Masters invitation and the Open exemption for those two tournaments, 2016. Mm -hmm. You gonna have a go? You know who that is, right? Ben Ann. <laughs> no, it's not. It is. It's Ben Ann. No, it's that yeah. name. Oh no, him. Oh no, that's not. I'll leave that one to you. That <laughs> Ben Ben Ann was above him, and Ben Ann actually got fourth and already in the Open. So Pachara Kong Watmai. Very good finish. Friend of the show. Hero to many, villain to none. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the that was the tournament that was here this week. Uh, like I said, loads going on. Um, also, we just picked up on a news story that's come out this morning, exclusive. Well, by the time the Monday Night Golf Show goes out, it's probably not going to be an exclusive, but it was an exclusive when we filmed it, so we're going to take a lot of credit for that. Yeah. And this is the uh, Ryder Cup host for 2022. Yeah, so it's going to Italy. Uh, congratulations, Italy, and the beautiful city of Rome. Now, uh, Italy has obviously never hosted a Ryder Cup before. Um, the amount of Italian players who are going to be available for that, you've obviously got your Manaceros, you've got your Molinaris, you've got those kind of players. Who else is going to be coming through? That's that's the, always the question yeah. in my mind because when you have a look at the kind of French Ryder Cup which is coming up, you can see European French European players who are starting to rise to the top. Was it last week or the week before when you had oh, about yeah. three or four um, French it players? It was last week. Top? It was last week. So whenever the there's a, whenever there's a Ryder Cup um, kind of coming it up, though, though that nation's players seem to get that little bit of an edge on you. Know, well put. you know, it's oh come on, you know, it's in our country, let's get there. You know, which Italian players are going to be coming to the fore? That's that's kind of the question you've got to be asking. So I've got to be honest. Apart from the obvious contenders I don't know a great deal of Italian players no so it's at the Marco Simone Golf and Country Club uh, apparently it's only 17 kilometers away from the center of Rome so we've already booked our tickets ready for 2022 seems an awful long way away doesn't it it does and have we <laughs> <laughs> we will do <laughs> I'm sure we'll be invited if not playing oh well well hey we don't want to rule it out hey <laughs> <laughs> you he, he already get into the Italian. Hey! <laughs> We're not doing some Italian before, actually. <laughs> hey, Baba, that's not to give me, eh? 
<laughs> wow, sorry for all Italians watching. Um, also in... Oh, that's quite good. Like that. <laughs> well, yeah. This time in the morning. Uh, also in some real controversy news, this is this was leaked yesterday in the independent newspaper, an independent brand uh, online and newspaper, that the RNA has made a private decision to drop Turnbury from their open roster. Now, this isn't obviously because it's a bad course. This is because it is owned by Donald Trump, who is currently running for president, uh, well, to get the Republican nomination in the US. And he is starting to become a little bit of a strange personality with some of his announcements. I don't, I, I, again, I'm, I'm dancing around some difficult subjects. He's making himself look like a bit of a tool in many respects. And the RNA have turned around. And bear in mind, this is the RNA. This is like a conservative establishment that is very re well very reluctantly recently allowing women members you know, this, is, you know, this, <laughs> this is this is not a liberal organization in the RNA and even they have turned around and actually said you know Donald Trump is going a little bit too far with the stuff that he's been saying so they've made a private decision to disassociate themselves with him and his kind of brand so what he's saying in that kind of run up to the election is affecting his business but it's also affecting the open roster in Turnbury, which is an iconic British huge. venue. I mean, it's massive. 2009 was the last time it was there when uh, it was Tom Watson and uh, Stuart Sink had that battle of, of the playoff where Tom Watson nearly won, won the oldest player that would have ever won. Uh, and also, it was looking to be at potentially the open for 2020. Mm. And obviously, and that's kind of off the cards, yeah, which I is mean, a, a huge shame. Because there are other kind of venues coming onto the open uh, schedule, so you've got kind of Port Rush and kind yeah. of the Irish courses County not, not, Down. Not Trump International anymore. Not Trump International anymore, no. Which is such a shame. That is such a shame. Because me, me and Rick have played uh, Trump it's International up in Aberdeen. And it, honestly, it is one of the most unbelievable courses that you are ever likely to play. And it is that good. It deserves to host these kind of well, events. But it's just not going to do what's it. What's strange is my some of my top 10 golf courses I've ever played, I think three of them have been Trump courses. Well, Trump International, Trump Ferries Point, and Trump uh, National in LA. Not played the LA one. They're just amazing golf courses, and it's going to be a real shame if, if you know, his uh, his outgoingness and his opinionated views are going to really affect his golf businesses and golf courses because they are amazing golf courses. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Like I say, it's not been officially announced by the RNA yet. This is this is reports no, a from the leaked report. Leaked yeah. report. So you couldn't it might not be true but it's pretty much gonna be true. Right guys so we're gonna do now the swing analysis of Shan Shan who well, my, <laughs> you could tell that might have been my seventeenth attempt at pronunciation of that then I still don't think I got it right. So it's gonna be an interesting swing analysis. Then we're gonna fly over to your questions which we got loads of this week. So we want to thank you so much for doing that. And subscribe. Yes, absolutely. So, sorry, I was just having a little bit chuckled to myself. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, please comment in the box below. Let us know what you think about this week's winners, about how people played, and obviously the off course news about the Ryder Cup and uh, Turnberry possibly being pulled from the open schedule. Subscribe to the channel, subscribe to both of us, and follow us on our social media platforms as well. And we will see you momentarily for the swing analysis and, of course, your questions. Ciao, Bella. It's good, wasn't it? Wow. Well, Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that means goodbye, darling. <laughs>